TGC Requiem, we're back with some more Death Shadow today. We're talking about Death Shadow Grixis. Um, basically, the, the big reason to kind of dip into blue uh, and cut the green is Snapcaster Mage. Uh, Snapcaster Mage, when enters the battlefield, gives target instant or sorcery spell um, flashback until end of turn. So this means you have, in essence, four extra you know, Inquisition of Kozlax, Thought Seizes, uh, four extra Fatal Pushes, and Stubborn Denial. Stubborn Denial being the other card in blue that you're really bringing to the table with um, dipping into blue instead of green. So Stubborn Denial is a counter non-creature spell unless its controller pays one. Um, and if you have Ferocious, meaning you have a creature with power four or greater, that spell is just hard countered. Um, doesn't matter if they pay a mana, it's countered. And so, um, you know, the Saltai versions try and play this card because of Tarmogoyf and Death Shadow. Since we're dipping out of green to get the, uh, the blue in this scenario, we have our Death Shadows to turn on Stubborn Denial, and then we dip into Tassiger and Gurmog Angler as other large threats to turn on the Stubborn Denial. <coughs> The um, the deck also cuts a couple key cards from the Death Shadow Jund in Mishra's Bauble and uh, Traverse the Uvenwald. Um, because you cut Traverse the Uvenwald and Tarmogoy, if you no longer really care about the cre or the uh, types of cards in your graveyard, so you no longer have to play Tarfire, which is you know strictly a worse. <clears throat> well, I shouldn't say strictly. Most of the time, a strictly worse card. Than lightning bolt, and so the move to Grixis gives you access to honest to god lightning bolt, deals three damage to target creature or player, one of the best cards in the history of Magic, and again you get access to four four more of these with Snapcaster Mage essentially. So um, that is an upgrade, and then you probably could get away with playing Mitra's Bauble, and to some extent there may be some valid reasons why you might want to play Mitra's Bauble over Serum Visions. Um, but here we play Serum Visions to just kind of smooth our draws out. You could get card draw with Mitra's Bauble without spending the mana, but there's really no... I don't want to say no benefit, but the benefit is negated a bit by not caring about the card types in your graveyard. Um, and Serum Visions gets you another card, it does cost you a mana, um, but it also lets you set up your next couple draws, which is which is pretty big. Um, and it's also able to be flashed back by Snapcaster Mage. So again, just it, it's more synergistic with this deck than Mishra's Bauble is. You shave a little bit on your um, hand disruption, but that's partially because you have better answers. Uh, also Stubborn Denial, as we've already talked about. And then we also bring in the Thought Scours uh, to, to actually just help feed our Tassigers and Gurmog Anglers, help us set them up faster, um, you know, so we can cast cast them for, you know, ideally one black mana. And then we also have Kolagon's Command, which obviously pairs very well with, um, you know, returning your Death Shadows to the battlefield, returning Snapcasters, and looping with Kolagon's Command. So um, the core of the Shadow deck being Death Shadow, Thought Seize, Street Wraith, um, and kind of Fatal Push with Kolagon's Command. That's that's all here. Um, you know, we're just shaving a little bit on Inquisitions because we have more answers, I guess more reactive answers um, in this build than, than you do in the Shadow build. The sideboard, a lot of people you'll see just the, the normal 4-4-4 four, four, and four with the um, Scalding Tarns. And I've kind of adjusted that a little bit, um, reading some other articles about different variations. You know, the, the big thing is black. Black is the important color for you. And so we're trying to keep as many of our fetches, or our shocks, black as possible, and as many of our fetches black as possible. Because if we get Blood Moon, the car that we really want to get is, is Swamp. Uh, we're less worried about getting Island. And that's why we're running 11 black fetches and only the five blues. Uh, if I actually had Scalding Tarns right now, I would absolutely run Scalding Tarn over Misty Rainforest, but I don't. And so uh, I'll be getting them soon. I just haven't gotten around to it quite yet since the Modern Masters release. Um, so basically this deck plays a little bit uh, more tempo-y, a little more controly. You don't have team or battle rages, um, and that's because Death Shadow, while it gets very, very large, your Tassigers and Gurmags are capped at 4 and 5 power. Um, unlike 
Tarmogoyf, which could get up to seven or eight power and, and really make make use of the Teamer Battle Rage. These decks are less effective at that, but these decks, this deck also has more efficient removal in Lightning Bolt and Fatal Push, and also has access to Lightning Bolt Snapcaster Loop, the old Bolt Snap Bolt um, shenanigans. In the sideboard, we have access to a couple more Stubborn Denials where that may matter. We have access to Fulminator Mages for the lands matchups and or just grindy mid-range matchups. Cold Gods Command when you need more artifact hate, uh, and again, potentially for more grindy matchups. One Anger of the Gods for, you know, some of the go-wide strategies that you might have to deal with, like Revolt Zoo or Elves, etc. And then two Surgical Extraction and one Nihil Spellbomb. Currently the um, Graveyard Hate of Choice for me here. The Surgical Extractions are extra great with Snapcaster Mage. Um, which is why I've kind of adjusted from the two Nihil, one Surgical Extraction that I was playing in Jund to playing one Nihil and two Surgical Extractions. Uh, we have access to the other Fatal Push in the sideboard if we need it. Totally legit that you might want to run a Terminate um, instead, and it's possible a Terminate could replace a Lightning Bolt. I personally like access to the four Lightning Bolt for when you just want to kind of race with, with Bolts to the face. And Collector Brutality good against a variety of decks, obviously. Um, you know, it's it's good for the hand disruption against spell-based decks like Ad Nauseam, um, or even, you know, like a Scape Shift deck to, to go for their Scape Shift, or the, the Valakut Breach decks, or Titan Shift decks. Also, obviously, really good against Elves, or Abzan Company, where you're trying to kill the creature, and strip a Collected Company out of their hand, and then obviously against Burn, uh, just one of the most powerful cards you can have in that matchup. And we're only running two uh, because we also have access to the four stubborn denial and so you know we can also hard counter some of their spells in that burn matchup as well and then liliana the last hope is just really good in the grindy matchups and and again just in certain matchups she's a phenomenal removal spell liliana the Li liliana the veil is a little worse in this sort of strategy when you're running the counter magic um, when you're trying to play everything at instant speed because you're wanting to hold cards in hand till the last possible minute um, a lot of the time, and so that just doesn't work quite as well with Grixis as it does with um, with the Jun version. So this is the the deck we're running today. Hopefully you enjoy, and uh, we'll get some matches in there for you.